Hello, today I want to share with you 25 of the best poncho tarp shelter setup variations. There are five basic setups for poncho tarp that you need to know. There's the plow point, the holding tent, the lean to, the A frame, and of course the alpha tent. Then there are many combinations of these basic pitches. I will be using a Belgian Army surplus poncho and it measures 224 by 1.64 meters or 64 and a half inches by 88 inches. But if you want to use any other poncho or small tarp shelter, yeah, they'll all work just the same as long as they're oblongish. I've also got a few extras here. Got a ground sheet so as I can lay on it and demonstrate how big the shelters are. And I've got a little bag of stuff. It's got my cord, it's got a paracord ridge line, it's got a few little toggles or woggles, whatever you want to call them. I made them out of a bit of dead elder. Got a couple of small carabiners, some pegs, it's just easier than making wooden ones for these demonstrations. A couple of walking poles because some of the setups will be using walking poles and I've got an extra bit of rain gear that uh, I'll, I'll share with you at the end but it's yeah there's a lot of hikers use it and it's very handy. So this is the first of our basic tarp setups. This is called a plow point. Pretty easy to put up. Just peg out the three points and tie it up either with a hiking pole or uh, with a tree because we've got a tree here. It could tie it on a ridge line. This has actually got a hunch to it as well. So um, yeah, there's enough room in here to sleep and keep dry. And it works pretty well with having a small little fire and keeping it out of the rain as well. Probably, yeah, like a little little wood stove, like a little fire box or a wood gasification stove, something like that, just about there somewhere. And then move it out of the way when you're finished and yeah, got enough room to lay down and stay dry. It's pretty low impact. It's only sort of like waist high. So yeah, easy to camouflage. It's probably your most basic tarp shelter really. All right, this one's a flying V or a flying plow point. And I've tied it off to a tree this time rather than using a hiking pole. And the uh, the front point is tied up a bit higher, but you can see there's a massive amount of space under there. And it was it's going to feel more roomy as well, being open like that around the bottom. So it's a great setup for the summer. So this one, a flying V or flying plow point with a lip. So this part's the lip. So you can see it's got like a asymmetrical porch on the front. So I've, I've moved the tie out so that instead of being on the corner like the plow point is, it's, uh, it's in a bit, so it's asymmetrical. Loads of room under there. Because it's flying, it feels more roomy, but it, this, this, um, this lip would also work well if the plow point was down on the ground, like an ordinary plow point. Really roomy, easy to get in and out of. Good protection from the rain. Probably wouldn't work very well in the wind. I'm calling this one a flawless gunya because it is pretty much there. I'm quite impressed with this one. So here you can see that I've got a sloping ridge line so it's tied tied to a tree over there and then it's staked down onto the ground so the ridge line is very sloping 
and the tarp is skewed diagonally as well. So it's not fully diagonal, it's in between. So it's shorter here and that end, it's longer. So it's like a third, two thirds. So this is my favorite one so far, I think. Yeah, it's fiddly to set up. Needs two, two poles or sticks and a sloping ridge line. But you could probably, um, as I start getting my head around it a bit more, you could probably improvise it with a few sticks or a, an A-frame lashed up, something like that. But it gives you so much space. I, I think a Y stick down that end with a point banged into the ground, just to lift this up a bit more, would be brilliant. And then it's, it's just so sheltered from the rain. If it was really hammering down, this is the setup that I would want, I think. Protected here, protected there. Just a little bit higher and I could sit up and cook under here as well with meths, not with a fire, obviously. I really, really like this. And I may have invented it, I don't know. I don't know if I've made it up or if, or if I've seen it somewhere. Obviously I've seen a gunya, but this is sort of a, a gunya without a floor. Oh, this is a Holden tent. Oh yeah, look, especially at the back, because we're going to be using that set up again. So yeah, it's got the... Uh, Got the walking pole at the back, walking pole at the front, so you could set this up anywhere. But it looks a little bit tight. Oh yeah, I can't just get in, but I've got to sleep diagonally. Because this is a very, um, how, do you, how do I explain this? This is a fairly square oblong. <laughs> but a more oblong shape like a lot of uh, like a lot of the small tarps are they're sort of you know a bit longer and a bit thinner so they've probably got about the same amount of material but they would probably work better for this holding tent so I've got a lot of space at the back but not enough width really but yeah it works and this is another one of those basic setups works with all different sizes of tarp this is a two pole holding Yeah, just about, just about when I sleep diagonally. But yeah, it, this would work better with a longer, thinner tarp. And all ponchos are different sizes, so, you know, just check them out really before you buy them. Yeah, this would probably be better in rough weather. It's pretty, pretty well pegged down and the opening's smaller at the front, so. Yeah, I could see this being useful. And as I say, you know, you could have a pole there and a pole there, or two sticks. So this one's an asymmetric holding, so it's like the standard holding, but instead of the tie-out point being in the middle, it's off to one side. And actually, yeah, I'll show you the back, but I've got the middle tied out where the hood is. Um, but you could tie the hood up with it with hoods, the hood strings and um, pull it out at the opposite end to give you a bit more space. I'll show you on the outside. So instead of having the tie out here in the middle where the hood is, you could just tie the hood up with the, with the cord and put this pole more about here. So it's asymmetric. I'll do it a minute for you and then you can have a look. So it's got an asymmetric tie out on the back. An asymmetric tie out on the front. The whole damn thing's asymmetric. It's pretty weird. I think it nearly needs another tie out. Let me get in there. But yeah, this looks like it could be 
better. So which way would I sleep? That way. I'll have my feet over there. Actually, that's not too bad. It's very low, but which means it's stealthy, you know. You can do it with two walking poles. You can do it with a ridge line. You can tie it to, you can tie this to a tree. Well, this one's called the cave. I can see why it's called the cave now I'm in here. <laughs> it is very cave-like. I don't think I like this one much. There's no way I could lay down in it. It's more of a stop and have coffee. But a steep plow point would be so much easier to put up than this. But this is a Holden tent derivative. So it's um, it's got the corners tucked in and you could you could probably use another couple of pegs and peg out the two sides a bit more for a bit more space, but I still wouldn't be able to lay down in here. Show you around it. Yeah, pretty low profile, but like I say, I think I would prefer a plow point. Still it's another little setup in your arsenal, isn't it? I'm using two walking poles in this case, but you could do it on a ridge line, you could tie it to a tree, two trees, a tree branch. Yeah, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Like all these setups, you know, they've got so many variables. But yeah, that's as close as I can get to a cave. Fantastic shelter. Another one of those basic ones, this is your standard lean-to. And the, the back is um, pulled out. So it's a bit of a hunch, I suppose. I don't know, I don't know what you'd call it. It's just pull the back out to give it more room. If the weather's nice, you can go higher. Oh, it's pitched on a ridge line as well. But you could do it with two poles, two walking poles or sticks. Either this or a plow point are your, are your two basics. That's what you go to, really. So you can see it's pretty low profile. It's only waist high. And you can see it's pulled out quite a bit at the back. This one's a half holding. So com uh, cross between a holding tent and a lean-to, really. Oh, yeah. Nice easy access, sleeping diagonally, it's very much like the plow point. Um, I'd say it was more open than the plow point. Yeah, nice one to have in the arsenal. So this is the flying lean to. On a ridge line it's about shoulder high. As spacious as heck, this one. Very open. Yeah, I could lay down on here and I could see everywhere. But obviously pretty drafty. I think it'd probably be best in the woods, this one. And you know, the fact that you have to sling it on a tarp, on, on a tarp ridge line because it's, it needs to be up higher anyway. But yeah, nice one. You could work under this one. A flying half holding. It's not really much point because, you know, you'd only put this half holding bit on there to block the wind. And it's two foot off the ground. You're not blocking any wind. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know, maybe. Well, this one is called a wind shed. Or it could also be called a lean-to with a lip. Yeah, so you get the idea. It's on a ridge line, pretty low ridge line, below waist high. So this is a pretty stealthy shelter. Pretty roomy as well, once you're in. Pretty protected. Yeah, I do like this one. It's pretty similar to a flying A-frame, which we'll do next. This one, as you would imagine, is a flying A, a flying A-frame. So it's, yeah, nice, nice roomy. And this is another one of those basic setups. So this is basic setup number four. 
yeah, very army is what you would imagine the army setting up. And this is flying, but you could also have it on the ground or close to the ground if the weather, weather was inclement and uh, pretty spacious. When you get in there, there is a very roomy feel to it and good views all round. It's on a ridge line, but you could also put it on walking sticks. Um, between tree, trees, you could tie it out between trees. Is this the modified A-frame? You can see it's like a standard A-frame. I've got one end tied to a tree and the other end tied to a walking pole, but you could use two walking poles. So it's got a Holden tent tarp back end and then the A-frame at the front. But because this is right down on the ground, this is going to be tricky to get in and out of. Yeah, pretty snug and spacious once you're in here. I mean, you, you wouldn't really need a bivvy. You know, a bivvy bag, it's, it's almost a bivvy bag in itself, really. <laughs> Apart from the ground sheet. Yeah, I'd happily sleep under here with a blanket. Canvas bedroll. Or even a, even a sleeping bag just on a ground sheet, I think. And then, you know, an air mattress or something. Something for a bit of comfort. But this is going to be a lot more airy and roomy if we fly it. You know, lift it off the ground a foot or two. Which would then be a flying modified A-frame. So I'll show you that next. So this is a flying modified A-frame. So it's the Holden tent tarp back end. But it's, I don't know, 18 inches off the ground at the back and probably 24 inches at the front. So it's slightly slopey. It's just way more spacious under here. I could see that, you know, I could sleep slightly diagonally and get my rucksack there by my side or I could have it by my head here. I've just got more space. I don't think it's just how I set it up. It's still a little bit floppy. I'm learning that even changing the angle of the lines going down to the pegs just by a few inches, it makes a big difference to how the tarp sits. Yeah, so this is the Togue tent from the outside. So you can see down the bottom there, I've got a carabiner holding the end together and then it's tied onto a walking stick. I've got a toggle in the end here because there's no oilet in the centre of this tarp poncho. But yeah, it's pretty neat. It's just a wedge in a different orientation, really. So rather than with the Holden tent, it comes down horizontally to a wedge. This one comes in from the sides to a wedge. But it gives you plenty of space in there still. So yeah, pretty neat. So flying A-frame Togue tent. Much more spacious. But... I don't really feel like I've got quite enough coverage. I don't know. It's uh, maybe maybe if I spread the A out a bit more. And does it really matter if you're in a bivvy bag? You know, it's just to keep the heavy rain off, isn't it? Really? Yeah. This feels like very minimalist camping. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's like I'm out in the open. <laughs> don't know. I can't explain it. Yeah, so just the same as the down on the ground version, except it's flying. Obviously, I had to put a line out here as well, down to a peg. So it's what, five lines and pegs, and then two ridge lines as well. Yeah, so yeah, not the easiest to set up, I guess, but it's not hard. So here's the Tetra wedge, pretty much down on the ground. I got it yeah, maybe three or four inches flying at the front and it's down on the ground at the back. But just trying to experiment to see if it will give me a more roomy feel and a bit more space in there. So yeah, there we go. I always wondered what a Tetra wedge was. Well, now I know. Actually, this ain't too bad. Just about enough room for me and under, under rucksack, I suppose. 
and uh, yeah, I don't know, let's see what it's like when it's shut down. Not quite got enough length, I have to lie a little bit diagonal, but not too bad. Obviously a more, um, yeah, oblong tarp that's longer and a bit less wide would work better for this. Right, this is a tetra wedge with the flaps up. It's basically a togue tent at the front and a holden tent at the back. So it's like a, a mishmash really. But it's quite neat. Obviously this version's flying because it's up off the ground. A little bit saggy. Still got to work on that. But yeah, let's have a look at these flaps. So I've got them just on a carabiner here at the moment. So let's put the flaps down. Just makes it easier to get in and out. Very spacious and airy when you want it to be. And then when you want to shut it down, Just use this carabiner. Just about works with uh, a bivy bag. Yes, yeah, feels a little bit restricted under here, but yeah, I suppose as long as you don't roll around too much and roll out of the tent, you'll be all right. <laughs> I think I prefer the modified A-frame though, flying. A flying modified A-frame rather than this but you know it's another option. Square arch somewhat tricky to get into. Reversing. <laughs> well it's all right once you're in but yeah a bit claustrophobic. Yeah, maybe if it was flying or up at an angle a bit. But it's, it's just two ropes wrapped around, a, wrapped around a decent sized tree. So instead of being an A-frame, it's got a fairly flattish top. So this is an alpha tent. So as you can see from the underneath, it's just two sticks crossed going to the corners, tied in the middle with a diagonal lash. And uh, yeah, you can have it propped up on one corner, like that. You can have two corners propped up, maybe three corners propped up. But it's just a, a freestanding mushroom fly, really. Well, this one is called a mushroom fly. It's like a teeny weeny version of the star tent. Yeah, access is tricky. Um, I don't know, it's all a bit floppy. Um, it is a genuine setup, but I haven't got the hang of putting it up. This is my first attempt. Yeah, mushroom fly. A floppy mushroom fly. It's very spacious under here though. If I can get get this one sorted, maybe I've got to have it not quite so steep of an angle, which would mean I'd have to lower it. I mean, you can use uh, hiking sticks as well, hiking poles, but I'm using a ridge line in this particular case. So this is the arch. As you can see, I've left one tree live, the one in the middle. The two outside ones are the poles I cut for the alpha tent, so I'm recycling them and I'm going to sleep in the alpha tent next week as well. But yeah, it's a pretty easy one, especially if you use the, some of the hazel stand to make the arch. I've, um, I've just used a, uh, a, a Y branch and banged the stake in the ground and I can pull it out and the branch should twing back up into the canopy. 
I suppose it's because it's higher up off the ground, but feels way more spacious and airy than the Alpha tent. I, I actually really like this one. It's pretty good. Could tidy it up a little bit more, get, you know, get, the, get each corner a little bit more even, but yeah, concept is good. Could probably tie out one of these flaps on each end as well, and it'd almost be like a mushroom fly, really. So I just pull the stake out. And that branch is back up in the canopy. So this, although it looks very much like a flying lean-to. Yeah, let's get it right. I had to think about that. Yeah, it's getting late in the day. Actually, this is a cross-quartered fly. So we've got a ridge line running diagonal there and another one diagonal there. It's tensioned onto those lines with prussic knots. The idea was that it's meant to be flat, but I couldn't find anywhere around here to set it out. I've, I've got a wide tree here, but a single stem there. So I've, I've gone onto the ground. But um, yeah, I suppose you could tie it up into the branches maybe, but I wouldn't be able to reach. Hazel stands would be the perfect place to do it because there's no end of places to tie it on. So you could put like a cross between four hazel stands and put your tarp on the top of there. Don't have to worry about getting it right because as you tension it, you pull the lines in. You just got to make sure that they're wide enough to start with. Massive amount of space under it, obviously. This, you know, it's as big as a tarp can get. And if it was up flatter, it would be even bigger because obviously it's losing a bit of length coming down at an angle. Yeah, I, I suppose the thing is, I have this up high, so it's like above head height, so as you can work under it, and then it'd be pretty decent. So that's our 25 poncho tarp setups. Take your tarp out in the woods and have a good play like I've done. And uh, try all the different configurations. See what you like, see what suits you. And of course that extra bit of rain gear that I alluded to at the start. If you haven't already guessed it. One of these, not a very bushcrafty color. Have to work on that but yeah you stick that at the front of some of your setups and that'll give you some extra rain protection in the night and if you want to get out nature calls then you've got something to keep the rain off of you while you're wandering around or if you're collecting firewood or whatever you're doing in the night so yeah and a lot of hikers really like umbrellas for walking as well. Even when they're wearing a poncho, this just keeps a bit of rain off. Down the bottom there, there's going to be a tarp ridgeline tutorial. And above it, I'm going to put the playlist for the poncho tarp setups. So I've got, I'm going to go into more detail about all of these setups. So I'm going to break it into five, I think, for each, each of the major types so there'll be a playlist top corner and of course you know over there don't forget to subscribe hit the like button and thank you very much for watching see you on the next one